Next are meshes and brushes. So first of all, as also covered in my asset development videos, every mesh in Unreal is one draw call. So this is one draw call, two draw calls, three, four, five, six, etc. So every draw call, every mesh is one draw call. On a low-end iOS device and a low-end mobile device in general, you would need about 50 to 100 draw calls to get somewhat acceptable performance. On a higher-end device, let's say an iPad 3 or so, you can probably take 3, 4, 500 and that would be the upper end of it. Kind of depends on what else you do in the environment. But let's say 400 or so as the upper range for an iPad 3, about 50 to 100 for low ends. Now if you look at the environment here as it is, the level as it is, you will have way more draw calls in view. Because this is 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. If you count how many individual meshes there are, it's going to be way higher than 100 or 200 or 300. In fact, if we use primitive stats, which can also be found in browser windows primitive stats over here, and we do count, we can see there's a total of 647 meshes in the environment. And the majority of them are located in a single room. So let's say that this is about 500 draw calls right now. That's way too high. So we're going to have to bring that down to say about 300, 200, 300, kind of depends on what your target platform is before that this is workable on iOS. For details on exactly how the engine, and it doesn't really matter if it's PC or iOS, on exactly how it renders meshes, please refer to my first video, the asset development videos. But in any case, what we have to do here is we have to make this instead of two separate meshes, we have to make all the pillars one single object. And we have to make all the upper pillars here one single object as well. And we have to make all the arches here a single object as well. So you have to merge objects together so you have fewer separate meshes in the environment. The way that I do that is, first of all, by using the primitive stats, I will try to find the most common lowest poly mesh in the environment. So it's important that we start with the most critical, the most essential mesh, which is the one used the most. And that's this mesh. It's used 52 times. And it's 700 triangles each. All of that together, 52 times 746, is 38,792. That, however, is quite a high poly count. What we're going to have to do here is balance it out between the processor and the memory. The thing is that right now this is very light on memory. Because it only has to load in a couple of meshes. So pretty much, for example, let's say this mesh here. If you double click it, it selects it. Well, that's this one apparently. If you now look at what the size is of a single one of those meshes, you can see it's only 51 kilobyte. So to load in this mesh, it only takes 51 kilobyte in the memory. However, if we were to combine all of those meshes to a single large object, then it would be 38,000 triangles, which would be about, let's say, 32 megabytes. Uh, sorry, 3.2 megabytes. For every 10,000 triangles, it tends to be about 1 megabyte in 3D data. So then it wouldn't be 52 kilobyte, it would be over 3 megabytes instead. So we can't merge everything too aggressively either, because otherwise our memory would shoot up way too much. So we're going to have to try to find a balance between merging too many things, and merging too many high poly meshes, and merging too little. So what I'm going to do instead is, I'm going to ignore this one for a moment. And instead, I'm going to look for the second most common and lowest poly mesh. And you can see we have 46 out of, of these meshes. And each of those is only 76 polygons. If I were to make a combined object of all of this, it would be only 3496 triangles big. And that's ideal. That's not much. A couple of thousands of mesh is kind of the aim. Also about that, how many polygons can you render? Well, actually quite a lot. In a mechanical, we have about 100 to 200,000 triangles in view. So there's a lot of triangles it can render, and the triangles, as also covered in the asset development video, the triangles really aren't your biggest concern. What really drives down the performance is the number of draw calls. The number of triangles is really not a big problem, so I rarely actually look at the triangles and I really just focus entirely on the draw calls. So this is the second most common mesh, and this one is ideal to combine. 
If you were to combine all of that into a single object, you would have one draw call rather than 46 draw calls. So I double click that over here and that automatically selects it in the level. And you can see that that is actually all the walls. So we can make all the walls a single object. We can do that by selecting them as we did. Then you right click that and you export it as FBX. I'll save it somewhere as temp walls. It doesn't really matter where you save it. And then I will open up 3D Studio Max. You can also do this in Maya. There's really no difference. Or I guess in Modo it would be the same. Any 3D package would be able to do this. You import the, uh, the FBX you just made. So for me that's temp walls. These are my import settings. I haven't done anything to any of this and unit wise it's a scale factor 1.0, 1.0. That's fine. So it doesn't rescale it. Okay. And now I have all the walls in here. Set that to shade it. Runs a bit better. Um, what I should do now is first of all clean it up a bit. Because the importing unwelded the vertices, it split the edges basically and uh, it removed the smoothing groups and all that. So I'm gonna quickly apply an edit poly to the entire lot of them. Select all the vertices. Weld them all. So I've now welded all the vertices again. Then I select all the polygons and I do auto smooth 45 degree. So it has a smoothing group assigned again. Because by default, it doesn't have anything design assigned. So now it has uh, one of the smoothing groups assigned again. Either way, that's my basic step. After that, I will select just a single one of those meshes. For example, this one. It really doesn't matter which one of them. Apply a new edit poly. And then I will attach everything to that single mesh. So attach. And I attach everything. So now it's a single object and now I have to only, the only thing left to do is check the light maps. So we'll add an unwrap UVW. This is already set to map channel 2. Again this tutorial is not about how to use 3D Studio Max or Maya but basically access the light map coordinates. UV channel 2. I will open that up. Looks like that, and I will simply repack it. So I'm simply doing pack UVs. Also found over here, tools, uh, pack UVs. And that simply redistributes all the UV coordinates in the, the 0 to 1 UV space. Not ideal by automating it because you can see there's some lost space over here. You can try to improve that a bit manually. But to keep it up on speed, I'll just stick to this. That's fine. And then I export the thing again. So we simply export select it again. Call it uh, replace the original one. These are my export settings. I have smoothing groups enabled, triangulate enabled, and scale factor is 1.0. The rest is not changed. Export it back to Unreal, and then in the uh, in my package that I'm using right now, I have Start Fit. I will import that mesh. These are my import settings, but uh, you shouldn't really have to modify them at all for a simple mesh like this. So, okay. And then you can see the result is this. It automatically assigned the material. If it does not, you can do so manually in lot info zero, elements zero, and here it says material. So you would have been able to look up what texture is assigned over here and copy paste that one there as has already been done. 
so that's fine now. We should set a light map resolution to this. Actually 512 because it's all the walls in the level. So it's pretty large. What you could have done as well if you really want to have, have it clean is you could have deleted the polygons on the back. You could have deleted all the polygons over here. But again, since the poly count doesn't really matter, the impact of this is going to be very, very small. The only thing it would save, however, is light map space, which could be a reason for doing this. And also what I tend to do in order to keep the memory low is I tend to disable enable per poly collision. We can see right now it's 33 kilobytes for the KDOP, which is the collision model. If I take that away, this is zero. So I just save 33 kilobytes. It's not that much, but if you have a couple of hundreds of meshes in a game, and each of them give you, gives you 33 kilobytes of uh, saving, then that does add up for the entire game. So I'll select the walls again. I delete all the walls, and instead I drag my new mesh in with the combined walls, and I make sure that the location is 000. So location 000. And then it should automatically line up exactly where the original was placed, as you can see. So I now made 46 meshes into a single mesh. And this is a process that should be repeated for pretty much everything in here, at least the highest poly, poly meshes. Oh, sorry, the highest poly, the most common lowest poly meshes. You can see the next one up would be, for example, um, this one 38 times 188 is 7000 in total. So it would be the same here. Exported that as FBX. I return to max. I do import. Select that. It imports all of that as you can see. Then I'm going to do is hide this one for a moment. And from there on, it's the same thing again. Edit poly. So very quickly repeat all the steps. Weld. I auto smooth this. I select a single one of those meshes. Add a new edit poly. Attach the whole lot. Didn't attach the whole lot. Attach all of it. Add an unwrap UVW. Set to channel 2. Open UV editor. Repack all of them. So it looks like that. And export again. Import materials already assigned. It has 67 kilobytes in KDOP. I'm going to remove the collision there. The collision is, by the way, something we'll fix later on with a separate collision mesh. So we don't need collision on this actually at all. The exception for that might be an FPS game where you have guns that can shoot. But assuming we don't have that here, we can take it away and save some uh, extra space. That's set. Then I'm going to delete all the original ones. Delete it. Drag in the new one. And set to. 000 in location and now we replace all of that as well so you will have to go through this level and merge everything that you can or at least uh, the lowest poly most common meshes first and then gradually up to the higher poly meshes depending on how much memory you have left and just how hard you have to reduce the draw calls you can see in the finished package here These are my walls. I haven't, didn't assign the material there in, in the, the mesh window itself. I assigned it in the level. But it's the same thing. These are all the arches. Uh, these are the arms. And actually the arms are special. You can have a look at those as well. So around every pool <coughs> you have these arches. But the thing is that these arches are quite high poly. So if you were to find this in the list over here. Let's see which one it is. It's uh, this one. You can see there's a total of 42 arches. 
worth 29,000 triangles. That's kind of too much to merge. If it goes into the 10,000s, it gets a bit much. So what you can do here instead is rather than having 42 of those arms, or whatever you want to call them, we, should, we can merge one group of them and then copy that one group around six times or five more times. So you don't always have to merge the entire thing to one large object. You can also merge smaller groups and then copy the smaller groups around. So what we'll do here is we'll merge just this local group of uh, how many arms is this? Seven arms. Export that. Again, it's got a bad UV, a lot of empty wasted space here, but I'm just doing this rather quickly to illustrate what's going on. Export that. Import the arms. I'm going to remove um, the KDOP again, it's 44 kilobyte in this case. There we go. Also, by the way, we should set the resolution, light up resolution. Say 128 for this should do. We forgot that for the other mesh as well. All of these bars is quite a lot of them. And it's quite important mesh, let's say 512 as well. In general, the light map space has quite a low impact on memory. You can, if you look at, for example, Epic Citadel, most light maps there are very high resolution. Most light maps there on buildings are, for example, 1024. And I tested the amount of impact the light maps have on the memory in game, and the impact is very, very small. So the light maps that Unreal generates, they get compressed very aggressively. So you can actually go for quite large uh, light maps without too big of an impact. So 512 in this case. Save it for a moment. And then uh, let's remove all of the arms we have in here. I deleted all of that, and then I will drag in my new arms. Again, located on 000. There we go. And then we manually copy this around for each uh, pool of water. So that's also a way of doing this. Uh, I would do the same thing, for example, for the walls here. These two pits, they're identical. So you only have to merge one of the pits and then you can duplicate that whole pit around as a single object or two objects to the other side. Then there are the brushes. If I hide the meshes here with Alt W or just pressing a W in case you don't use FPS controls, then you can see what's brush in here. So while the majority of the level has been made as mesh, you can see these are all the meshes, there's also a small number of brushes in this level. Brushes on mobile work very, very bad. I would strongly advise to avoid any form of brush stuff at all when, using, uh, when creating mobile levels. The problem with brushes is that it divides it up into small blocks of uh, basically divides it up in several draw calls. It's not going to render the entire thing at once. It's going to break it up in small chunks. And each of those chunks has different materials assigned. For example, this one and this one. So in that, that's two draw calls per chunk. And you might have 10 chunks here or so. Two draw calls. That's 20 draw calls or so for the entire floor. I mean, the whole thing is very inefficient, actually. And it will really slow down performance. So to be good, you would have to convert any brushes you might have or preferably avoid br using brushes at all. But if you do have brushes, convert those brushes to meshes. And we can do that in the same way. Not through right-clicking though, but we can do so through exporting to FBX. 
So what you can do is you can export the entire level, file, export, export all. Make sure you select FBX at the bottom of the window. Make sure it's FBX over here, the other formats don't work very well. And this will export the entire level, including all the meshes as well, actually. So you could also work like that, but I find it harder to select things in Max or Maya. But you could technically import all the meshes at once, and then just uh, modify it all at once as well. Import that. You can see what happens if I import the entire level now. I literally get everything in here. Including even some of the lights. You can see there's lights in here as well. So it literally imports everything. Lights, uh, the light cones here, every single bit of it. So let's for a moment here select just the ground. So I've selected the brush now. I'm going to do a uh, height on... Uh, Hide everything else. Hide unselected. And now we can see the brushes in here. So this is what's made of brush in Unreal. So we can now turn that into a model. It's uh, mostly the same process. Edit poly. Weld everything. Uh, set smoothing groups. And then also you can see here in Unreal, you have the default texture here. You can't actually see this, completely covered by mesh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Max select every surface that carries this texture and simply delete it. You can see if I click the side here, it says ID2. I'm going to uh, select all ID2 and delete all of that. So now I have this left. Then I would simply have to light map this. And then we can export it again. We don't have to set up different materials and different textures for on, on this. The, uh, all those references are actually still in here. So all I have to do is simply export it again. The uh, texture references, everything is still intact. We don't have to check the UVs either. Not immediately. There is a small thing that we have to do a look at. But for basic work, we don't have to check any of that. It's all still there. So I usually don't even bother applying textures to this in Max or Maya. I simply import it as a gray object, modify it, export it again, and it works. You can have a look at uh, light map UVs here. For brushes, though, they don't exist, so we'll have to make them. Or they might exist, but uh, they're going to be very inaccurate. And also with brushes, you will probably have some problems that it uh, splits up some of the edges, and you will not be able to weld this due to the messy nature of uh, brushes. You can see it's in generally badly triangulated and badly modeled. Not ideal. You'd be better off doing this from scratch in Max or Maya. But it'll work. So I'll select the floor, I will planar map that. Doing this rather fast, simply just uh, making it fit within 0 to 1. Again, on information how to properly set up light maps, please refer to my asset development videos. I'm not going to 
repeat those steps in this one to keep up the speed. So now I'm scaling this on a different scale, which is not entirely correct. It should have been the same scale because it's the same kind of polygon. But uh, I'm just keeping it up on speed here. And here we have a very strange polygon. It should be investigated a bit further to do it properly. It's a very thin polygon. But uh, this kind of does it. Everything is at least within 0 to 1. So we can export it again. There we go. You can see the textures are automatically assigned as well. You can see it's a KLOP of 1.79 kilobyte. You could choose to disable it here and save 1.79 kilobyte, but it's not that much, so I'm just not going to bother. I am going to raise the, res the light map resolution to 512, though. And that should fit, so let's try to add that to the level. Same here, location 000. And you can see it works. Now I'm hiding the brushes, or actually now it renders both, so you can see it flickers through. And if I hide brushes, you can see it's exactly the same. So I've now converted my brushes into meshes. I'm gonna do now, since I have done that anyhow, is I'm gonna Select all my brushes. Uh, select, select all brushes. Delete all of that and rebuild geometry. And then I have this. If you were to try this on an iOS device, however, you would experience one problem. And the problem you would experience is that the texture would be flickering and shaking. It would be a very strange graphical artifact. And the reason why that's happening is because an iOS device, and I believe any mobile device, so Android devices as well, all of them are unable to render textures that are far outside of the 0 to 1 UV range. So while a PC doesn't have a problem with this, mobile devices do. If you look in Max, and if you check out uh, the diffuse UV coordinates, so that's on map channel uh, 1, What you can then see, and this is what it doesn't like, is it's very spread out. So these are the UV coordinates. And you can see this is 0 to 1, so it's much larger than 0 to 1, and it's very spread out. The further away from 0 to 1, the more imprecise it gets, and the more weirder it's going to start to look. By the time you're about 30 to 40 times away from 0 to 1, it will begin to shake very aggressively, and it's pretty much unplayable. So what you have to do is you have to make sure that all UV coordinates, and this doesn't just go for converted brushes, this goes for any mesh in general whatsoever, you can never have your UV coordinates further away than let's say 15 times the length of 0 to 1. If you want to be safe, 20 times probably still works, but again, the further you are, the worse it gets progressively. And this is quite a bit further, I think, than... Uh, you can see it's 24 times further than it should be, uh, than 0 to 1. So what we have to do here is bring everything down a bit. There's a very handy tool in Max here. I'm not sure if this exists in Maya. But if I enable absolute relative type ins here, then I can simply type 1, and now it moves up by one step. If I type in minus 1, it moves down by one step. So I'm simply going to do this to bring it down four steps two steps, one step left. By doing this, I, I don't even have to add the textures because I know the texture will look exactly the same as it looked before. It will be in the same position because by typing 0, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 here, it simply moves 1, 2, 3, 4 times the length of the texture on the UV coordinates. Therefore, it looks the same. Might be a bit confusing, but this actually works.
try to bring everything close to the center. The closer the better. Sometimes when you have very large polygons you may want to split it in the middle. Like so. Again this will still be seamless in between because it moves the exact same length on the v-corners every time. Gonna quickly move for a moment just to see if I didn't forget any parts and I did. That seems intact. So something like this, you could perhaps move it a bit further, but try to move everything towards the center. And we we'll can export this again. And it will work better. Uh, by re-importing it, it did lose the material assignments though. Seems to have gotten a bit confused here, so we'll have to reassign this. And there we go. There is one other thing to keep in mind as well when handling meshes on uh, mobile. And that is that the depth rendering is much worse and much more imprecise on PC. So if you for example have, let's say, uh, let's say this wall here. What you can do on PC quite well without ever running into problems, or not very likely, you're quite unlikely to experience this, is if two meshes are right in front of each other, then the mesh behind it will not render true, as is expected. You only, this only becomes a problem on PC, is when the meshes are very very close or overlapping, or the distance is very very great. In all other cases, this renders correctly on PC. So from a very far distance this might start to flicker and intersect. That's the problem with depth rendering. You can see it here now, this is, a, this is exactly that problem. From a distance, if two surfaces are very close to each other, they begin to disappear and render through each other. Uh, on mobile this problem is much more exaggerated. So on mobile this wouldn't appear a problem from this distance, it would already appear a problem from, from for example this distance. So on mobile you have to make sure you have a bit more space between your meshes. You need more of a buffer when overlapping polygons. iOS seems to be better at that than Android. Android seems to have far greater problems rendering all of these things. Maybe it's specific hardware, maybe I only tried a couple of models. But uh, Android, phones, Android phones I worked with had a much bigger problem rendering overlapping polygons than uh, any iOS device. So it's also something to keep in mind. You can take a look at how those things are applied to a mechanical. This is our largest level in the game. You can see it's really quite large. It's about an hour of gameplay. And uh, it's an hour of gameplay without loading screens basically. It just was a very challenging level to get into the memory. And also the draw calls were quite intense. So we've done lots of merging, all of this used to be individual cubes, individual meshes, all of this has been exported and merged. And we pretty much merged what was in view at the same time. So this became one large object, then this room here became one large object. So it's pretty much room per room, area per area got merged.
here as well. Didn't merge absolutely everything because then it bought too much work and it would take too much uh, memory. Uh, but we tried to merge as much as possible, especially the lowest poly objects, which were the cubes. The rocks, on the other hand, were not merged. All of the rocks here, and there's lots and lots of rocks, they were not merged because each rock was about, you can show you, each rock is 192 triangles large. So if we would have merged all of those together, it would have been tens of thousands or perhaps even hundreds of thousands of triangles in one large object or several unique large objects and that would have been too much memory so the rocks we couldn't merge unfortunately what we, what i did to to try to improve things was i made sets of three or four rocks in one so i did try to make larger sets of rocks you can see them here for example uh this one and i tried to replace individual rocks with at least these combined sets but i couldn't merge all of them to unique meshes because it would have been too high uh, too high poly and especially with a level this large the memory was a problem so we really had to keep down on the the merging as well you can see all the merged meshes are in here you can clearly see the size as well it's 38 kilobytes for this for example that's perfect but some of the bigger ones see if we can find the uh, one with a high triangle count Well, they're all fairly low, but for example, this is 169 kilobyte. It's really about 10,000 triangles, is about 800 kilobyte. Here we have one that's 6,688 uh, vertices and 4,840 uh, triangles, and this is 353 kilobyte. So the number of triangles and especially the vertices as well bumps up the size. And you can see to try and bring it down, we disabled enable collision uh, on those polygons. Also, as covered in my asset development video, the more vertices you have, the larger the size. So if you want to keep the, the size of the mesh down, you should try to have just one smoothing group. All smooth edges. No hard edges. If you have a hard edge, it will break the vertices and the edges apart, thus your size goes up.